Welcome back to Super Sentai Review episode 312. We're here reviewing episodes 28 to 30 of Go Busters, the Messiah Cell arc. If you look at the arc itself, it's 28 is a standalone episode, but it's a prelude to the next two episodes. And the way this thing is structured, this could have been the end of the series. This could have been. You're thinking, really? It could have been. But the only reason why I thought that way, based on what happened here, because the old man Dylan died, like ever gets destroyed here, his base gets destroyed. You would think, oh, series over. Nope, we got 20 episodes of this thing. But that would take a minute. So, in the case 28, we, 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 uh, we have a minor subplot of. The return of Rika. It's basically also the return of a, a metalloid in this one where he sprays everybody, like every whole swap people. Like, get this. First, you have Nick becoming Himaru. Himaru becomes Yoko. And this is hilarious. Riju becomes Enter, which I found be so funny. He's like, why am I Enter? And I'm surprised. And the, the way it's like reacting is, and, oh, yeah, it's, and of course, Yoko becomes Himaru is so funny. And this this was play a role. Of course, they found oh his his secret his weakness weaknesses is he's a, he's a afraid of chickens. And in this very episode, we find out the reason why he's afraid of chickens because if he had in the sink and got got caught up in a chicken coop, and somehow chickens decided to attack him for some reason in the chicken coop, and that's why he freezes every time he sees chicken. I'm like. Okay, at least it's a better explanation of why the heck, basically, that it's it's a better explanation of what they gave for Devin Daniels in, in Beast Mode for which, of course, they, they gave a stupid reason why he frees them because he's a dog. In that one, that's because, oh, he's a cat. So, yeah. So, in the case of that, uh, he does breathe. Now, Inter does not find out about this at all. Like, no, he doesn't. But that's mostly put exactly what it is. It's it's quite interesting of a standalone episode. Though we have this very interesting thing here of Rika, where she reveals to Himaru about, well, of course, that Nick chose these two dogs in her book because she, he can't go and look at the pictures because he'll freeze because there's chickens everywhere. So apparently these chick, these two dogs named... Uh, um, I think it was like Glock and Nick, I believe it is. Which, of course, basically, this is also the, the, the same name that Escape gives her, well, her guns. Yeah, and all this is, it is just pure setup for the next two episodes. Yep, that's simply put exactly what this is. Because of course, at the end of this uh, end of this episode, we see Messiah becoming Messiah Cell. If you see Beast Morphers, you know this is basically the robot form that Evox assumed throughout the remainder of season two, a uh, season one, and pretty much the entirety of season. Actually, pretty much the entirety of season two. He pretty much basically had this form. This in the in this series, this is the first time it shows up. And from what I've read, this form only appears for three episodes. But given the fact that Beast Wars appear a lot more, they probably like this thing, so probably the reason why I hear a lot more. So the plan is well, the episode well, then we see him transform this, of course we see what messiah really is well this is a form of his but we'll get more of it next episode so the next episode opens up it seems like though we see by the way when we see messiah's base we see what you see his base is the old transport research center that was transported 13 years from the series that's his base yes this complex is his base the very base that everybody basically has sacrificed himself in order to basically save the world we also see a mysterious thing that's like on the ground, and in this dream sequence that Moro has, is that it's coming out of the ground, and he's doing this while just at a table with Nick. Okay, so 
Then, of course, he's basically called to the to the special ops meeting room because we have they, they apparently see messages from his father. Now, this is the first time we've seen his father in 13 years. If you watch the series, there's no reason why for this. So, according to message, you, get, you get, now it's going to go to hyperspace to stop Messiah. If it doesn't, basically it comes to the real world itself. So, kind of in a way, they reveal that uh, Jin actually has been, had been working for Messiah, but actually against his will. He had no desire to do it, but he had no choice in the matter. So, but he, but he, he basically is a traitor to him, mostly. So, he basically prepares him to transport into hyperspace. And there's no new monster to this one, which I'll get more than that. So, basically, Inter basically is far about this. Like, we're not going to send a monster or another Megazord. We're basically going to do this ourselves. Don't waste energy. So, we see, we see Escape cover up her skin. Like, <laughs> why? She's hot. Why the heck would you cover up for? Inter wears, like, an outfit that you would see something, well, a guy I like this to wear. So... <laughs> Yeah, and then of course they, and, and then we then we see something that we we see a lot in Power Rangers, the common show of Power Rangers that toward the end of the season, we had the villains, just break up, just busting their base, basically wreck stuff, and presumably blow up their base operations. Sentai, this has happened like once or twice throughout the entire. So I've seen this. It happened in Go Ranger. It happened in Car Ranger. And aside from those two, I don't think it's happened any... Well, as far as you can tell, I don't think it's happened any time where the villains break into the base. When it comes to Sentai. You're thinking, what about Gal Ranger? Nope. Hurricane Not really. So, they, of course, they're trying to not break into the baby either. Oh, no, they're trying to stop the action base itself. Now, in case you're curious, though, when it comes to a particular series, do the villains have a strategy room? That they use of the whole series. No. No, they don't. They do have a base per se, yes. But the main reason why we don't see a strategy room for this particular group. Now, yes, Go Kaiju did do it where they actually broke into the strategy room for that one. And it did have a few times popping Go Sager. Shurikanger? Nope. What about Go Anger? It did. It definitely did. Gekka Ranger? Oh, yes, definitely. Bokenger, not really per se, because none of the villain's bases are broken into. Not one. I don't know about uh, Abba Ranger, Decker Ranger, or even Magic Mostry. I don't know about yet because I haven't watched them yet. So, even if I bring off, even basically, I'm going to command you fight off Inter. Yes, the commander fighting Inter, which I thought was quite interesting. And of course, also before this, uh, Himura is fighting Inter by himself in the parking garage. Like if Nick comes along and gets back to the Megazord, he gets a new suit, because the only one he has damage, and then they transfer into hyperspace. And, and but by the way, they, they explain this in episode 27, where the Morpher has actually got a special let's just say uh, ability to a lot of people to move around in hyperspace because it's like very heavy gravity. Uh, it's like it's like 30 minutes where it's more stable. So basically they go and by, by the way, they, they even sort of have, they, apparently the commander, because he, he was a friend of basically the Rebus's father. Excuse me. He had blueprints to the actual base itself. So basically they go in and they go inside and then the Messiah himself. It's like, how dare you bring it to my own domain? How is this your domain? This is the domain of Messiah. I am Messiah and here are my troops. And he brings back four dead Metalloids. Yep. He brings back Cutterloid, who was a Stromach in episode 4. Pomodoroloid, who was destroyed back in episode 16. And Keloid. You're like, really? Yes, really. Yep. Yeah, 
yeah, brings back basically these four dead monsters. Some of them were destroyed by the Go-Busters, but they have to be separate. And, of course, uh, Jin and Stag deal with Messiah while the other three find out where the main Messiah is. And then they go, and then they go to a room which they, they, apparently this room has not been touched in 13 years. It still looks exactly the same, even with a Chris Nickery still up. And then they find out some secrets. So, Escape's guns are the same name as Hamora's mom's dog statues. Also, second, they find that the secret behind enters, like, frequent, like, phrases he says of the series, where he says very something like, Italian and French. Those are based upon words on these pictures of the scientist. And it turns out that enter and escape are based upon composites of all the scientists from this facility except for Jin to comprise these two avatars. And it's also revealed here that thanks to basically where our main Messiah is, it turns out the scientists are part of Messiah. You're like, what? Yes, yeah, seriously. It's like we're getting a Matrix thing here. Where it's like they're a part of him. Because when I heard this, I saw this thing like, really? They're, they're part of him? Like, is Super Sentai ripping off the Matrix with this? Because that's what it seems like here. But at least it's not hooked into a virtual reality. Like it was in The Matrix. So eventually, they get everybody outside. And of course, they have a big battle with four of the five Go Busters fighting the Messiah. And then, of course, Red Buff takes his, his personal Zord. Of course, the the Zord anyways. And he goes on the side, fights into, destroys his Zord. And eventually destroys his computer. And then, of course, Messiah falls apart. And then, of course, it looks like the, the hyperspace is about to stabilize. But it then will reveal something interesting, though. That apparently in Jin's personal hangar to keep his own Zords, he has the real version of himself in stasis. And why is he in stasis? I'm not sure. And then he says, oh, hyperspace is destabilizing. Of course, Stag mentions, oh, maybe, maybe they could take him, take him with him. Like, maybe, maybe they can stick him. Like, no, no, no sign of that. Like, really? Can you not, you know, take your real self and put it inside of one of your zords and just transport the real world and then here's something really weird though like they, they, they have it where the three main go-busters get to the real world and all of a sudden Jin and Stag are there completely out of the blue and it seems like yeah it seems like the whole you think by watching this episode like everything is over but not really because of course basically like I would say the whole thing with Jen does leave a little... It does leave a loose thread hanging that we could see the series continue, which it definitely did. But there's nothing to do with Messiah for the next two episodes because we're teaming up with, with one of the middle heroes. Who is it? You'll find out very next episode. But this arc was really, really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You could say about watching this three-part, it kind of wraps up pretty much the majority. Like, you could say, oh, the series is wrapped up. But not really, because it's 20 episodes left to go. But before my break, I had two more to go, and then my break. So, this will be pretty much that particular video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. <coughs> Excuse me, and do not hit the dislike button. Next up, one more time the video, and then it's on to Blue Exist. Okay, next video. Bye.